minute on that. It's good to see some new faces like David Lee. Haven't seen David in a long time. Good to see you, David. Me too. Thank you. Good to have you here. Thank you. And Brenda, is this your first time on this call? It is, yeah. I thought so. So it's yeah. good to see you. Thank you. You too, Gina. Thanks. Thank you. It was good to see you at the uh, Women Wine Wednesday last yeah. week. Yeah, and that was my first time attending that. I've never been to any of the in-person ones. Oh, they're fun. Yeah, I know. I just haven't been able to for whatever reason, so I'm hoping to make them more often now. Good, good. Good. All right, well, we've got um, we've got a good handful of people here today, including Carla Fisher and Eric Moore, and a phone number I don't recognize, which is 828-289-9945. I'm not sure who that is. That one's mine. This is Eric. Oh, it's Eric. Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome. And we have Josh. Okay, awesome. So let's kick off um, our weekly call for those who are new to this call. Um, typically what we do is we do a quick go around of who everybody is, quick, and I mean quick introduction, meaning name and company, um, and we'll make it quick like that. And then I'll come back around to see if there's a challenge um, someone wants to put on the table. And then we take opportunities if somebody wants to chime in with a suggestion of how to maybe overcome that challenge, or maybe you have a best practice, something that has worked really well for you in the past week that you want to share. That's something that you tried that maybe somebody else can apply. So we're going to kick it off that way and try to keep this on time to one o'clock. We've got... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, looks like ten plus me on this. So just kind of keep that in in um, in your mindset when you're speaking, so that we can keep everybody on track and give everybody enough time to speak. So for those who are new to this and don't know me, my name is Gina. I own Pivot Ten Results and Carolina Improv Company. My theater is currently closed right now, but I did kick off virtual improv classes, um, the sale of them last week. And so that's exciting because that's taking off. People are actually signing up and people are actually calling me and asking me when they can come back to the theater. So, so that's good. So that's who I am. And I feel facilitate these calls each week as a way to collaborate and brainstorm for small businesses more on the positive side than on the negative side. We know what all the negativity is going on, but how do we push forward during this time? So I'm going to follow my Brady Bunch grid that that's the order I'm seeing you in. And I'm going to start out with Brenda. You're new to the group. So a quick introduction of who you are and what your business does. Okay, great. Brenda Tringali, professional organizer. So I help people uh, declutter their lives so they're more productive. And awesome. the name of my business is At Your Fingertips Organizer. Awesome. Thank you, Brenda. I'm going to pop over to Kathy Strauss. Hi, everybody. Kathy Strauss with ImageWorks. Uh, photography and art. I specialize in personal branding and marketing photography, as well as I do teaching of online uh, art classes. Um, and it's me in a nutshell. Okay. Photo best photographer in the area here, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. David Lee. Hi, uh, David Lee from China Battery Tree Linens. We supply hotel restaurants linens. Thank you, David. Thanks for joining today. Thank you. Sherry Glensky. Hi. I am a writer for South Carolina Woman Magazine. Oops, she froze. She froze. She'll come back. <laughs> and in the meantime, we go over to Dan. Hi, I'm Dan Mucci. I'm an executive business coach, and I chair a private advisory board <coughs> of 12 companies on the Grand Strand. Awesome. Welcome, Dan. And Dan also serves as my business coach and advisor, so I appreciate his feedback um, and how he pushes me. Uh, bouncing back over to Sherry, who got pushed out for a second. You need to unmute yourself, Sherry. I had. I did unmute myself. You didn't hear me? You, you kind of dropped out, so I just wanted you to do another quick introduction. My internet was kind of spotty. That's what the problem was. 
Um, I am a writer for South Carolina Woman Magazine, and uh, I specialize in writing about restaurants. So I'm very excited. They're starting to open up slowly. Mm. I'm not sure if I'm going to be one of the first ones going, but I'm excited to talk to the restaurants that I was supposed to write about for the last issue. So awesome. let us awesome. open up. Thank you. Allison Hamilton. Um, that's okay. Hey, um, I'm Allison Hamilton. I'm a financial advisor with Raymond James. I'm on a team with my dad. Awesome. Thank you. Josh. Morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Josh Gertzog. My company is Grand Strand Answers. I am a marketing company. That means I help people with their strategies, with their directions, and then with, then with, the, and then with their execution. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Eric. Hey, everybody. My name is Eric, and I am a uh, business development representative um, slash sales for PCMatic. We do antivirus um, around the world, but we are primarily based in Myrtle Beach, but we are a 100% work from home company. So our, our expertise has already been working from home, but the hardest part for us now is we still don't get to go out and do these face-to-face -face meetings and events. So that's uh, one of the downsides of COVID for sure for us, but um, it, it's always awesome to get on these Zoom meetings and seeing the faces again from the chamber and from EDC around the, around the county. So this is fun. Awesome. Welcome to the call, Eric. And Elena. Hi everybody, Elena Sbrana from Houston, Texas, and I'm a commercial photographer and I own Your Photo and Your Photo Sports. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Elena and Carla. Hey there, Carla Fisher, Authentic Web Solutions. Um, we do digital marketing and build websites that convert. Um, so we like to get into the nuts and bolts of a business and understand them and be able to build a website that really works for them. And, uh, and I got to give Carla a little shout out and props because Carla and her team is the one behind the PPP conference coming up next week. If you haven't heard about it, it's the PPP <laughs> virtual conference. I'm super excited about it. And Carla made me do it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> someone's got to make you do it and hold you accountable. Oh, and Dan Mucci loves to hear that. So thanks. <laughs> so thanks for that. So um, let's start with anybody having a specific challenge that's come up for them or maybe is can ongoing that you want to throw out there to get some advice from the group. Kathy. Um, I've got, uh, what I was talking with Brenda about earlier, um, when we, when I jumped on the call and it's, I have now got two people or two clients, one, which is a firm confirmed client, uh, for photography. And then, um, uh, this other one for, um, coming up in September and it's making sure that I have as a photographer, the right um, cancellation or rescheduling policy. That is a big thing for photographers is like, you know, uh, in, in my client in um, June, um, I put in the um, uh, contract that I sent her, which was normally I have a non-refundable retainer fee. That's it non-refundable um, and everybody is always good with this. Um, I decided, all right, um, it's going to be a, in case only if you let me know in writing two weeks beforehand or due to illness or due to the corona, not because you just decided to go with another photographer, but um, I will refund the money. I now just spoke with a gal for the past hour um, for a wedding and I pick and choose on my the who I contact and who I work with for wedding photographers I used to do it a long time ago um, but this is a substantially larger fee um, and it's like making sure that I have the right either rescheduling or um, refund policy for my contracts 
Uh, it's interesting that you bring this up because I actually just um, emailed an attorney friend of mine because this is this is something that's becoming a more and more of an issue to deal with, especially anybody in a service related industry. Um, me as a speaker trainer, it's it's I'm looking at putting a clause in my contract about a couple different things. A um, not being held responsible or you know liable for someone getting COVID and then trying to blame our company for it. That's one. But what do we do with the refund policy? Um, and I'm waiting to hear back from him on that. I, this is just my opinion. Um, when it comes to like disaster type things, I think that's where we have to kind of be err on the side of empathy of, you know, nobody, nobody anticipated um, a tragedy or a disaster, um, and and they sh they should be able to get their money back, or you know, strategically, what you try to do is move them to another date. Um, and again, it's looking at like for us as a training company, we already put work into it before we show up. So our deposit, which is a fifty percent non refundable deposit, is because we're actually working before we ever show up mm -hmm. to the client's Absolutely. location. So yes, we are. The work has been done. So there maybe there are some parameters you can put in place for turning in some of that work. I don't know what the, I don't know what the answers are. I'm just kind of telling you like what I'm thinking off the top of my head okay. of what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody else have a, a thought on that? Dan, I thought Dan, you might. I'd just like to ask uh, Kathy, what um, what are you thinking in terms of uh, what do you require like a large contract with this wedding photographer like it, it were for weddings um i usually require 50 percent up front um and that is non-refundable because yes gina i am doing the work and the prepping and working with with them to make sure that i understand i mean this is even for conferences that i'm mm -hmm. working with the event coordinator to know what is the shot list where am i going who am i meeting with etc cetera, etc cetera. scouting the um the area to make sure that i'm not taken um, by surprise um yeah. you know so there's a lot of work that goes into the stuff beforehand trust me i know i i burned myself with a large <laughs> training project that i had with creative and training and it took me a month and a half to prep for this whole yeah. thing mm -hmm. um and by the time i was done and i was like mm, i didn't charge enough so <laughs> yeah. yeah no i think that's i mean i think that's great and that standard uh what is your concern though you said particularly with this large cl uh, the 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 concern is is that you know uh, and now you know, we're talking natural disaster because she said oh by the way the wedding is on september 15th and i'm going oh god that's hurricane season <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. oh oh trust me i one of my very first weddings that i photographed uh when we were living back in virginia was during uh, what uh everybody coined up there's snowpocalypse um it was we had um oh gosh by the time i drove out the door uh we already had like eight inches of snow thank god i had a jeep cherokee um that was able to get through it and i had to pick up my other photographer and the caterer moved it from the venue to a hotel uh, but the couple was like we're getting married come hell or high water and this is what this gal said in the case of a hurricane, we're getting married come hell or high water, and we're already working with Damon's on it, and so it's going to be indoors, et cetera, et cetera. This is what it's going to be. So I'm going, all right, I'm up be paddling my boat over there to Damon's. <laughs> Um, but my my concern really is is just like how do I word all of this stuff? What do I do? And then it's erring on the side of empathy. I know that's been a con that's been a conversation within the uh, um, Myrtle Beach photographers group. Um, they've had a lot of conversation about all of this stuff. Yeah. So um, it's, it, is it more around the uh, the occurrence then of uh, an event that you can't control? Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
and I know the Professional Photographers Association also has in there, there's been a lot of uh, conversation on the forum group, which is um, a liability um, and not being held, you know, somebody gets sick, Aunt Sally gets sick, and then, oh, the photographer walked by me, and um, it's her fault that I got sick, um, and I need to make sure that probably, you know, looking at my contract, and e even my general photographer, photography yeah. clients, uh, that that contract has got to be in there. I am not responsible now if I'm coming in and I'm hacking a coffin I'm gonna find a sub in order to do it because right. I don't want you to you know to, to get yeah. sick but yeah. um, so two thoughts come to mind one 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 is you know just the idea that if you're going into a, a public situation that maybe you're gonna wear a mask and you're gonna practice social distancing that could be a a standard inclusion which people would say okay this photographer is going to take this you know this business serious mm -hmm. and then um i guess uh what was the other one out uh, what, what i was thinking um you said something that triggered another thought um let me pat let me pass for a moment. i'll come back okay. to the other uh, one. all right was it along the lines of because uh, again my reminder was um looking at your contract and possibly talking to an attorney because that's what I plan on doing is talking to an attorney about, you know, I have different clauses in my contract down to like disparagement clauses, right? If someone's yeah, not well, happy, if it, someone's it, not happy with me, they can't disparage me. Yeah, I know what it was. It was around the idea of them uh, signing that they accept full responsibility for anything. Yeah, yeah, that. I but have, they're, they're I have. Other. I have something in there that um, happens to be, um, I am you know, like the, uh, I'm not responsible for missing um, a shot because you didn't tell me or um, in the case of uh, Uncle Billy walking in front of me as I'm trying to get that critical photo, um, that I am not responsible for that and that I am also, my clients are, um, uh, do not, they're responsible if somebody in, in a party, whether it's an, a, an event, um, a gala, or any of that other stuff, that they are responsible if some piece of my equipment gets damaged. Yeah. That, that is standard, in, that is standard yeah. in, my, in all of my contracts. So I'm, so, so I'm sort of thinking, though, more around the risk with COVID. In other words, if they agree yeah. to have you come, you agree to certain procedures. You won't come without a cough. You won't come without a fever. You'll wear a mask. But beyond that, mm -hmm. any ri any risk that you know they agree, they're taking the risk, so it can't come back on you. Right. And and I actually think my concern, you know, in getting all of this prep too, is you know would be it's across the board for all business, all service businesses right now. Right. Yeah. I imagine a lot of that's happening. So yeah, th but, those are my thoughts. I'll just sit and let others contribute. Now. Okay. Cool. Um, the, other th the other thing I'm taking into consideration, and again, I'm consulting with an attorney on this is for a brick and mortar location, anybody, any place where someone can walk into your establishment. Um, I'm trying to find out if we can actually have a public notice that is, that's posted that says we're not responsible. Is, is just kind of a safety because I think you're going to start seeing people who are going to be looking to point fingers over, you know, they got sick and they think they someone coughed at your establishment. And so you're responsible. I don't know if that holds up, but I'm going to see if I can get that attorney on our next call to kind of talk about what all that looks yeah, like. Yeah, I would, I would like to, I, I would like that um, to be done. Um, and um, actually, I got kind of gotten an email from uh, uh, Tom Winslow um, today that kind of describing, you know, some of the different oh, things okay, that are going on. Uh, maybe we'll get Tom, uh, we'll get Tom on then because Tom. Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom is really good at that. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, that's a good. Thank you. I'll call Tom on that. Um, before we move on to another challenge, Jessica Lowry has joined us. Jessica, if you want to just do a quick um, introduction of who you are and what your company is. 
Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Let me change this so you can see me. There she is. <laughs> I'm um, at the kitchen today multitasking. So I figured I would take my face off while I'm on other screens, but I'm back. Here I am. I'm there listening. Um, I am the founder and CEO of the power of elderberries. And we produce immune boosting elderberry products. And I say products because many of you are aware of our elderberry syrup, but we're also in the beginning stages of producing our new elderberry gummies made directly from our elderberry syrup. So we're going to be starting to take pre sales from our retailers on those very soon. Um, we actually have our elderberry syrup at several retailers around Horry County and beyond, um, mostly in South and North Carolina. We have 86 retailers that carry it. We also do direct shipping off our website for anyone that would like the convenience of it being shipped directly to their front door. And all of the production takes place at our commercial facility located right here in Myrtle Beach. And uh, we don't have a brick and mortar set up for customers to actually come and purchase the syrup from us. Many we've met at the local farmers markets that we've done for the last few years that Hopefully we'll start soon. I don't know how that's going to plan out if they're going to continue those or not. Um, that's kind of what we're waiting to see. But um, everyone usually goes to a retailer closest to them to, to find our elderberry syrup at. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Sure. I'm going to return to, does anybody else have something that is a challenge or a question that they have they want to put in front of the group? Everyone is doing perfectly. That's a fast meeting if that's mm. the case. <laughs> how about how about some best practices or something that worked well for you last week? I finally figured out how to get all of my artwork onto masks. Onto onto what? Onto the face masks. Oh, 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 cool. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, where I have all of our, uh, the art products, um, I, they, uh, um, they finally started offering um, putting your artwork on uh, the mask. So there's some, some of my, some of the pieces that I create will work better on a mask than others. So I've just started, uh, um, can you know adding that option of people and I'll start to promote that. That's good. That's okay. very cool. Great. Yeah. That's awesome. So Gina. Dan. Uh, I, I'm just curious uh, how many of you have uh, discovered something through this COVID that will change how you do business sort of like a 2022.0. Is there anything around the technology piece or or, or anything around uh, your behaviors that has changed that actually showing you a different way to do business? A great Let question. Me, can I comment on that for a sec? Sure. Um, yeah, first of all, hi, Dan. Hi. Um, the, uh, the first, I want to comment on the question, which is almost kind of similar to what I was going to comment on. I got an email. I, I subscribed to Entertainment Weekly Magazine. I got an email, mass email from their editor this week. Um, and it was, he was saying, this made me rewatch Groundhog Day and see the scary similarities to what we're going through when we are so quarantined. Uh, you know, we're a little less affected here than in other places, but many places are affected. And it made me rethink that movie. And while there's many things about the movie that could come through, but, you know, for the, hopefully the many of you have seen it, but... The thing about it is, is at the end of the movie, when the Bill Murray character finally emerges from his long day, he still has all the memories and all the things that occurred to him when he kept reliving the same day over and over again. You know, he learned to play the piano, to do ice sculptures, to be a much better person than he ever was. He spoke French. He knew ways to help people in a way he's, he'd never known before. Mm -hmm. And when you ask that question, Dan, that's what I think of. Um, it's not so much even the technology aspect of it, although that's part of it, but it's what have we learned about how to be better people and be better business people Absolutely. Uh, from yeah. being in this situation. Um, I'll give a couple and then other people can give more, but 
I mean, one is look what we're doing right now. We're having a way to be able to have conversations um, in a mass way, which as we get better and better at it, the conversations get better and better. The yeah. information shared gets better and better. Yeah. Think about some of the times you've been at in-person networking meetings where most people just keep their mouth shut or they really are just looking for, you know, one person to buy their product that day and it's been a successful opportunity. I think in these kind of environments, we go way beyond that. I think we go into far more detail, much more macro stuff as opposed to just micro stuff about how to do our jobs better. I think this is a huge advantage. It also becomes on a personal note, a, a, a way to, com to interact with people who you never really thought about interacting with from long distance because of the distance involved. And you might pick up the phone and call them or even have a FaceTime or a Skype conversation with them. But this coming Sunday, I'm having a Zoom meeting with my high school drama professor who has gathered all of his former high school students that he taught when he was a brand new drama teacher back in 1972. Um, and <coughs> we're having a Zoom meeting of all those people this coming Sunday night. It's incredible. It's a simple thing. It's not a business thing, but it never would have been thought of had we not gotten into this situation. So. I talked a lot, so thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks, Josh. Does anybody else want to um, answer Dan's question? Hey, I can step in a little bit, Dan. So on the technology side, I, I talk to companies literally all over the country. I've got a call as soon as I get off of this one for the company in Minnesota. And one of his big things is how productive his employees have been. It's kind of a fear type mentality to where they're afraid they're going to lose their job or they love working from home and they don't want to go back. So they're trying to prove how productive they can be at home. Mm -hmm. So that's been the biggest part. And then the security side is everybody's so much more vulnerable. And I've done a couple of different webinars during all this that um, I just address the best practices of security and taking care of your stuff, quick, quicking, you know, no links, trust nothing that you're getting an email, especially if you're on a business computer, just um, be mindful of everything and trust no one in this situation because for us, I mean, we're, we're an antivirus and we're a cybersecurity company. So for us, security is paramount. We talk about this every day, but that's the biggest thing for us is people are much more proactive working from home. They're, they're trying to show that anyway because they don't want to go back in the office. And number two is trust nothing on the security side. And a lot of companies have made a lot of big steps in changing up their cybersecurity to help strengthen their posture for the work from home part. Because a lot, well, the one I'm talking to today, they were a five day a week company at the office, but now they're switching to, they're going to start two a day. So they're going to work Mondays and Thursdays from their office and the rest of the days are going to be working from home and they're going to see how it goes. He didn't want to do it, but all the employees kind of showed that they could do it from home and um, he's, he's released the reins a little bit, but that's just one of probably 20 companies all over the country, especially up in New York. Those have been the, the hardest ones and they're still they're still nowhere near getting back in the office. So that that's just kind of my my two cents there on the uh, the security and kind of the business posture here lately. Yeah, yeah, thank, thanks for that, Eric. Um, similarly, I was talking to a client last week in in Dallas, a current client of ours, um, and I we we do training with their IT organization within the organization, and she said that their their productivity and and profitability have actually skyrocketed through COVID because they had a plan in place, meaning they, they were very clear and communicative to their staff of what was expected, but they actually do daily meetings, daily Zoom meetings departmentally. Um, and in those daily meetings, they're short meetings, but they're the beginning of the day where it sets an expectation of, here are the priorities of the day for each one of you individually. And then the following day, they do a check-in on how did that go yesterday with what your priorities were. And so that what they've done is they've created a kind of this habit. Um, and, along, and, and again, Eric, to your point, there has been also fear along this is your opportunity to prove yourself to keep your job because there is a little bit of a fear of people getting furloughed and losing their jobs so people are actually stepping up because of that but putting the productivity kind of tool in place 
has made a huge difference in that company actually they said they're they already have market share but they're probably going to pick up even more market share because the, their smaller competitors are not able to keep up our productivity wise i found that really interesting yeah yeah it's a it's a wild dynamic it really is to see it, it's a it's a change in culture of what everybody on this call knows for sure because none of us have ever seen anything like it and the biggest thing is that you know for, I guess I'm a, a Gen Xer, I guess. I don't really know where I fall anymore, but I, I look at it as a sense of, you know, we've always been tasked with, you know, can you accomplish this? Well, and, yeah. and plus the work from home thing, you've got a, you got two people, you got people that really love it or you got people that really hate it. And me, I'm a work from home company. I do like working from home. It's, it's just awesome. And it's just saved so much time. But the hardest part now, well, the biggest part, the dynamic is I'm not traveling around the country and I'm not wasting a lot of time. I used to waste a lot of time driving to meetings Yes. presentations yes. whereas now i filled that time with more calls and more emails and more work getting done so it's a it's a wild dynamic that of course we're all still adjusting to it but it's just it, it's been fun so far i try to embrace the positive of it it's been fun and in, in looking at it from that sense but at the same time you know the other side of it is there is no fun i just hate that it came to this to get us to uh to start looking at different ways to be more productive Hey, there's um there's a book I want to suggest for everybody. It's called A Beautiful Constraint. Um, I can't remember the name of the author right now off the top of my head, but A Beautiful Constraint. It's about dealing with things that are thrown at you, and then how do you get creative in in taking that constraint and, and turning it into something beautiful that becomes something that you didn't expect. So that's a really good kind of mindset type of book to tap into of course there's a whole section on improv so i'm a little bit biased <laughs> on that if i say so myself anytime there's a book that covers a, a section on improv um that does it for me some of the things that i've done differently dan um as you know i finally launched um an improv class online virtually that starts next week and that um, got people signed up pretty quickly, including people from out of state. So that was kind of a, that was kind of a slap in the face of like, oh, who knew people would sign up. So yeah. <laughs> taking our virtual training online, um, having people like Carla force me, even though Dan's been pushing me, Carla forced me, um, <laughs> making those things happen. We're running a rehearsal, we're running a practice tonight for our, our for our, our improv group tonight. Um, so it's, everything is, everything is different to Eric's point though. It's kind of kind of cool too. I kind of am like liking this not travel thing. I could get used to building more business without being on the road so much. So some of what I've been doing differently. Anybody mm -hmm. else doing things a little differently? Well, I'll mention this. Um, there, there's a, a group that I'm with where financial advisors from uh, female financial advisors with Raymond James all over the country. And um, we physically go and have some, uh, a conference together. Now we've started communicating through Zoom like this, just kind of to support each other with ideas and things. And talking about the book, one thing that we're doing is we started um, a virtual book club just for the accountability that the book club offers. So we're, our, our book that is in Ju July, but some of y'all may have read it, Traction. Oh, yes. So we're going to do traction and, and got the accountability. So which, which accountability is so important, but um, Zoom's been out there and we've all used it, but we probably would have never thought to have done it for the book club uh, venue without, without this. So That's awesome. Traction is, traction is a great book. And if you want to um, hear Mark Winters, who wrote the book um, Rocket Fuel, which is part of the whole EOS world and traction, which is Gina Wickman. Um, the Pivotal Leader podcast, I have an interview. I don't remember which one it is, but if you go to the pivotalleader.com, that podcast has an interview with, um, with, with Mark, who wrote Rocket Fuel, which is, um, comes out of the book Traction. Okay, and that's Mark Winters? Mark Winters, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? 
Brenda, you're new to the call. So something inspired you to come today. What was that? Well, actually, I'll be honest. What You can hear me, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, so what inspired me, Gina, was you last Wednesday at the Women in Wine and whatever. And I think it was when you talked about um, the ask that you had put forth in one of these meetings. I don't know if it was last Monday or what, but just really putting yourself out there. Um, and I think you went into bartering with someone. Uh, do you remember what I'm referring to? Oh, I do. And Carla mm -hmm. Fisher probably could talk all about that because Carla answered my ask. Okay. So, so maybe she, maybe she wants to respond to that because she was on the other end of the ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, for me, um, the bartering thing is something I've always done over the years mm -hmm. and I've always felt like it's been lopsided in the sense that I know I provide a lot of value and I don't necessarily <clears throat> feel like people understand the importance of, you know, what they could also provide. So when I reached out to Gina, I already knew that she could provide value to me because mm -hmm. I've been following her kind of stalking her. <laughs> For a little while since I found out about her podcast, which was through a mutual um, connection that we have. Uh, and there's something that drew me to Gina and just her personality, her humor, um, you know, and a piece of what she does is all about like pivoting and voice, you know, the voice that you have, um, which is something that I'm really exploring and stepping into. Um, so Gina doesn't even know the I think the um, inspiration she gives me to, you know, show up and um, be who I am and a big part of who I am is giving back. And so I, I knew going into this that there was a lot of value that I could get out of um, collaborating with Gina. So yeah, I've definitely offered up my services to her because I think this woman could really kick ass in the online space and she should be. So I'm... I'm here to help her elevate, and I know that um, that will come back tenfold, you know, when the time time is there, and it already has. So I told Gina the other, I think it was last week, like she doesn't even realize how much value she's provided me already leading into this. So that that's that's what I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carl. I, I wanted that perspective from the other side of it. So, so Brenda, what I had put out there was, was, um, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us who like lost all cash flow, um, and, you know, you don't have money coming in, but what are you going to do? Shrivel up and die. You, you still have to make things happen. So how do you make things happen when you don't have cash to do it? Uh, and it made me think about there's so many people with so many different services or products that they can offer in kind to another business and bartering is, you know, it's not new. It's there's, there's still barter companies out there that exist that you can put in, you know, your services or products. And then kind of like there's a pool and you can like go dip in and find something that you need. So, um, I went old school because I was raised old school by a very old school father who made us work in flea markets. And that's why it kind of <laughs> came to me that, let me put it back out there. Um, here's what I need. And I just go to Facebook and I go, here's what I need. Who wants to help me with um, social media marketing um, for my business? P.S. I have no money right now. <laughs> But I have, but I have, I have other mad skills that you might like. And so um, just putting the ask out there, the worst thing that's going to happen is no one's going to respond. Right. And the right. best thing that's going to happen is somebody is going to respond. So if you are always showing up exactly as you are and being who you are, unapologetically, mm -hmm. not worrying about trying to please all the masses. This is where it becomes super important to niche what you do. You're going to attract your audience. You're going to attract the people that want to work with you. So if people aren't interested in helping you, they're not going to, they're not going to respond. But if people are interested in working with you, they will respond. Mm -hmm. So if you show up and you ask, it's like sales 101. The yeah. worst answer you're going to get is no. Yeah. And yeah. usually no, sometimes a not now. 
So it doesn't hurt to get ask. Yes. You're not going to get the yes unless you ask. You're right. You're right. And exactly. And I got an intern that way too in the same week. So I put out two asks. I got an intern and I got a Carla. There you go. Well, and with, and with a Carla, I got like a team. So yeah. <laughs> a team that kicks my ass and Carla, I know I owe you a video, which will happen after this call. And you owe me a dance too. A and dance. I owe you a dance. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> dance. All right. I want a video of that. Fine. I you owe have her to come to pivot power. You have to I, come to the party to get the dance. Ah, uh, yes, got it. Okay. I, or I owe a TikTok dance. Um, <laughs> I'll explain why that didn't happen yet. Um, mm -hmm. So, anywho, does that answer your question, Brenda? It does. And so, um, hats off to you, Gina, for just putting yourself out there and being so honest and open and um it's hard for me to to put myself out there um, why that's off to carla i don't know hats off to carla let me just finish just for jumping in and for offering to help and whatever um so i'll i guess i'll i'll just talk about if you don't mind my challenge yeah and go for it yeah i actually was i was just planning to observe this meeting that's why i didn't jump in i wanted to give other people who attend regularly the opportunity but i'll just jump in really quickly so, well, that, that, that's why I asked you to speak because yes. I knew you were sitting back. Okay. So a uh, professional organizer. So my, my business primarily has been helping residential clients clear the clutter. So whether it's, you know, dealing with space, possessions, paperwork, digital clutter, whatever. Um, and one, my goal, you know, two or three years down the line is really to help people um, more with um, doing things virtually, I guess. So this actually has been good for me, this, uh, this pause, because it's forced me to now start to transition my business from in-person to more virtual. And um, I feel guilty saying that because obviously it's been a, a tragedy uh, what's been going on with COVID. But anyway, so it's pushing me to do that. So I'm starting to develop uh, virtual classes that I plan to teach and, and starting to coach people virtually. So it's new territory for me, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity that, you know, again, turning lemon, uh, lem yeah, lemons into lemonade, just it's, it's for forced me to accelerate my, my plan. So what is my challenge? I think my challenge is really just trying to wrap my head around the whole thing. I think what I want to get to ideally is probably, um, I've been doing some trainings on productivity, um, uh, probably record those and put them on a website, on my website, and start to charge people or, or, or whatever, or just to get the word out there. So I guess I'm just trying to figure that all out in my head. It's a lot. It, it, so my it advice is, to you yes. is just do it, get out of your head and just do it. Yeah. Even if it's not perfect, just do it because nobody cares if it's perfect. Right. Except and, me because I'm a perfectionist. So that's um, yeah. my, my worst nightmare. Mm. I feel I feel you. That's one of the reasons why I don't. I have to do a couple of videos this week for my class that I'm conducting right now, and I'm just been dragging my heels. I know I just got to do it. Here, yeah. here's here's the thing, everybody. This is the most forgiving time ever. Yeah, you're right. Right now, people are extremely forgiving of the fact that you're not perfect. The lighting sucks. Your audio is iffy. Your background is meh. Your hair doesn't look good where kids are running through the, the room, um, people are forgiving of that. Right. So this is the best time to be doing it, to get the practice right. doing it. You can perfect it later. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, and I have to give kudos to uh, the Ollie program over at CCU, if anyone is familiar mm -hmm. with it, right? Classes for people over age 50. Yeah. So all the in-person classes were canceled. I used to teach in person. Um, and then, you know, overnight they went to virtual classes. And so it forced me to learn Zoom and to, and, but I jumped in when they said anyone volunteering to teach virtually, I immediately put my hand up and that was outside my comfort zone, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity and it's been great. And, and to Carla's point, just, just yeah. do it, yeah. right? Yeah. Now that you know Zoom, right. like Carla is, I am working with Carla and she's, is going to get my classes online so I can convert all of my stuff, my gazillion training programs, <laughs> finally convert them somewhere, put them somewhere. But you can go super simple with this yeah. and 
do a zoom, do a training on a zoom. It, you capture yeah. video, you capture audio, you upload it to YouTube or Vimeo yeah. or, you know, and I'm, and I'm just talking in pure, simple layman terms yeah. because technology makes me nauseous. <laughs> um, you know, that's as, that's as good as I get until I find a Carla. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, Carla, were you going to say something? You started to light up. No, I, it was no, it's just funny. <laughs> That's going to be a new term now. <laughs> Point that. <laughs> you find have a to Carla. You have I'm not to find a, Karen, a Carla. Carla. <laughs> find a Carla. Yeah, not a Karen, but a Carla. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, Brenda. And I'd like to challenge you to um, make something happen. Okay, I will. I'd, I'd um, like you to be on next week's call and update us on what you did. I will. Absolutely. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else want to throw in a challenge or maybe a best practice that happened to you in the past week or past or during COVID? Sherry Glensky, going to put you on the spot. So now <laughs> that the restaurants are open back up um, and that's been an issue for you, what are your plans right now in... Um, stepping forward and what's going on with the magazine well it's a real personal challenge because i haven't been able to see my grandkids mm. um, they're in maryland and it's been really hard haven't seen them for three months and my daughter is a real stickler for us, <clears throat> us staying out of anywhere so we have a tentative date to go up in um, memorial day weekend they're coming down in july so I'm not going to do anything that's going to potentially challenge that. So it's real. So I'm staying out of restaurants, but the ones that I have a contract with for last month, I will definitely get in touch with them and go see them when it's not busy. I'm not personally that scared about it, but I don't want to potentially bring anything to their children. So personally, it's a really important time for me. Um, as far as the magazine, I believe we're going with the next issue. Um, I don't, I haven't talked to Terry in a few days, but I don't think the online presence is happening yet. She was moving everything on to GoDaddy and had a three hour conversation with them last week. So I don't think it's there yet, but I'm definitely going to talk to her later today or tomorrow and find out where it is. So that's my personal and professional challenge right now. And you know what, you, you do what you do what's best for for you that you make it, you just compromise it and make things happen that way. Because obviously we have learned to, that we can pivot through all of this mm -hmm. in our own ways, whichever works. All right, any, anybody else want to throw anything into the ring? You guys are quick today. Mm -hmm. All right, if you're new to the call, um, and chances are I don't have your email address, would you please put that in the chat box? And so what I will do is I will, I will add your email to my email list that I send out every Monday morning. Um, I also send a follow-up email, so you'll get the replay on this, on this call. Uh, and then I send out a reminder every Monday morning of, you know, don't forget, here's the call, here's the link. So most of you are already on the list, but I don't think I have Brenda, David, or Eric. I don't think I have you on my list. So um, thank you, Eric. I see that I got that in there. Also in the chat, you will see that I have posted the link to the PPP virtual conference, which is the Pivot Power Party Conference. And um, I'm excited. We've got some really cool speakers, including um, Zig Ziglar's son, Tom. He's going to be on that next week. And um, Carla, I got to let you know, I got a fourth speaker that just came aboard who responded late. And we got to find a place to squeeze him in because it's Jeffrey Gittimer. And nobody wants to say no to Jeffrey Gittimer when he says he's coming. I'm going to make space for him. So, All right. um, we will pivot. <laughs> we will pivot somehow. We will squeeze it all in. It'll be like bonus content. Uh, so check that out. Even if you guys can't attend it, if you would share it out for me, that would be super awesome. Um, I would appreciate that. So the Pivot Power Party coming up next week, the 19th through the 21st. 
And if you guys don't have anything else, um, I'll see you next Monday. See you. Great. Hey, everybody. All right. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Gina. Bye.